guys welcome to another video my name is Theresa and I am a fragaholic now if you are too and you love watching YouTube videos about these fragrances then I hope you do like share and subscribe to my YouTube channel so today I will be talking to you about one of my favorite niche houses and that is none other than Surge Off okay so why Surge Off Personally, for me, I find that Surge Off is so strongly Italian that I just absolutely love the display of culture. If you look at Surge Off perfumes, they are really mostly in the traditional Italian style. And what do we mean by an Italian style perfume in the first place? Well, it's very hard to describe, but to me personally, I find that there are two major characteristics to it. Number one is the use of a lot of these native ingredients that you find in Italy, most especially, of course, the citruses. So I'm sure you've heard of bergamot, you've heard of Sicilian lemon, you've heard of neroli. You also have a lot of aromatics, you do have a lot of lavender, you also have the deep herbs such as um, patchouli, and then of course you have all these rich opulent smells or fragrant flowers such as irises. So all of these are usually or typically used in an Italian style perfume. But onto the second characteristic and something that um, really does char characterize or classify something as Italian, it's not just about the mix of the ingredients, but it's also about the very presentation in the olfactory and visual sense. So if you look at um, Italian fashion houses like Versace, like um, Prada, like Valentino, you already, if you imagine the kind of style that they have, they're always very busily opulent, just in your face, rich, elegant, you know? And even if you look at Renaissance painters, such as Donatello, such as Michelangelo, it's very dark. The colors are there, the pigments are there. So in the same manner, in an olfactory sense, an Italian style perfume is just in your face rich. There is no other way to say it, but it is truly luxurious. It is truly elegant without even trying to, to trying hard. So it's heavily balanced, but it's also very, very opulent and elegant. Now, so we've gotten those two things out of the way. What would be my top five in the house of Sir Joff? It's very hard to describe, or it's very hard to start, but let's start off with my honorable mention, the one that almost made it to the top five, but I'm sure a lot of people love anyway. And this is none other than Naxos. So Naxos is under the 1861 line, or 1861 heritage line of Sir Joff. And interestingly enough, you know, um, this 1861 heritage line was created to celebrate the 150th year of unification of Italy. And there are actually three different fragrances in this line. The first one, of course, is Naxos, which, which represents, you know, um, the island of Sicily and all the richness of it. So you do get a lot of um, herbs, you do get a lot of, a lot of um, citruses in this. Then you also have Zephyro, and Zephyro is a representation of um, Rome and the richness of the balsams and the resins. I mean, if you imagine churches, for example, the first thing you remember is incense, and that's pretty much it with Zephyro. And then finally, you also have Renaissance, and Renaissance is like the amalgamation of these two different islands or these two different places to represent the richness and the opulence in the highest and most popular period of Italy, when Italy was the very, was at the very center of the universe at the, or of the world at that time. So why did i why do i say that this didn't really make my top five okay i mean compared to the maybe 15 um fragrances from serge off that i've sampled this one is a love for me because it's one of those that grew into me when i first smelled this i very much didn't like it because of the heaviness of the lavender and a lot of people actually liken this to Mugler Pure Heaven. I get the similarities. I mean, like, pretty much. I mean, if you don't have the budget, then Pure Heaven isn't really that much of a bad deal or bad fragrance to have. But 
Pure Havana is not for me because when I sprayed it, I mean in the air it smelled really nice but as it as I like moved closer to my nose, there is just something that made it smell like wet dog for me and I'm not sure if you guys get it but that's definitely something that just put me off altogether. Naxos, however, is more well balanced. Like I can really accept the richness of this more without feeling like it's gone way overboard. So when it opens, it definitely has the opening of a citrus or an aromatic fragrance. It is very, very heavy in the lavender, but the tobacco and the honey never disappear. It's always there. However, it only comes out and the beauty of the fragrance really does come out only in the dry down. As the lavender dries down, as the citruses dry down, and all that's left is the lavender, uh, sorry, is the honey in it, and the vanilla, and the tobacco leaves, you get something so richly spicy and beautiful, especially when it's just cold outside. It almost feels like you're in a jazz club and it's like, just smell me, you know? But anyway, so now to my top five, my actual top five. <laughs> On my top five list, we have Ivory Root. And I think Ivory Root is actually the only fragrance here that doesn't really smell very Italian to me, but I like it anyway. And the reason is because I find, I like the characterization and the story behind Ivory Root. So Ivory Root is part of the Join the Club or JTC line. And the JTC line is essentially um, a line that ca that classifies each person's personality or characteristic into a particular club. You, if you feel like you're an intellectual, you love writing, why not try more than words? If you feel like you're a navigator, a seafarer, why not try 40 knots? Particularly with Ivory Root, the description that got to me was um, an adventurer, a backpacker, someone who just loves to travel, loves roughing it out. And so to me, I just wanted to really find out more about Ivory Root. So when I sniffed it, this is a very beautiful amber fragrance. But what I love about this amber fragrance is it doesn't smell like your typical amber. If you've already tried something like MFK Grand Soir, you know, you'll know already that Grand Soir is very thick. It's syrupy, it's very creamy. It's very, it's almost like, you know, the resins are mixed in and it's very liquid. This one on the other, other hand is very dry and balanced. And I really like it because I find that something as syrupy and creamy and so richly ambery, it just doesn't sit well in all kinds of weather. It it really does need cold weather so that the warmth is balanced very well. But because this is more like, you know, the spices that you never really mixed in with any other medium, it just spices. It almost feels like you just went to a bazaar. You just went to a market. You just traveled and you just happened to pass by you know certain place and you collected all the dust and the aromas from the atmosphere and then when you take off your t-shirt that's it like it's there so ivory root actually when they described it funny enough they only describe the opening as a spicy note accord it isn't particularly particularly broken down in the website or in fragrantica but i smell a lot of caraway seed i smell a lot of pink pepper and cinnamon in the opening and in fact I quite like this I guess because it smells a little bit similar to how a mouage epic woman would smell like without the heavy rose so what this is is essentially like dried spices then mixed in with like a crushed up amber resin instead and that's why I find even if it's really hot and you spray this, this almost make you, makes you just feel like you're just in the Moroccan desert and you just decided to buy something from the market. So again, ivory root definitely, if you like amber, if you like warm spicy fragrances, this is something that you should check out. Now on to my top four. Another one of those that I didn't really like at the very very start and that is lira this is another one of those that people just love like nexus like oh my god they're the absolute favorite of a lot of people however for me it wasn't a love 
at first sniff. And I'll tell you why. While I absolutely loved the opening, like it was just so rich when it comes to the blood orange and lemons, it was just so fresh. Within 15 minutes, it started getting a little bit too sweet. And I think I made the mistake of wearing it during the time that it was raining and very humid and not particularly cold. So one day I had a massive headache and I decided to just to have a sniff of all my fragrances in my collection and just choose what I wanted to wear. And all of a sudden, Lyra became the perfume to wear for me. And it just made it smell so comforting. Like I just wanted to snuggle in bed, you know, with the duvet wrapped around me, with the cold air just like freezing my face, but my bo the rest of my body is warm. This is the perfect scent for it. It smells a little bit marshmallowy because of the mix of the blood orange with the caramel, but the dry down is also absolutely beautiful. If you've smelled Nishine Annie, the vanilla there is a little bit woody, and I would say the vanilla in here it has some similar characteristics however this one has more of a caramel ending to it so it's a little bit sweeter and more syrupy and thicker as well and stickier another interesting tidbit about casa Marathi is that this actually pays homage to the ancient italian per way or style of perfumery and the way they describe this is that it is created by the finest raw materials with the elegance and opulence of the 18th and 19th century style or design. What I also like about this is that this also brings into the limelight or it also pays homage to this to a particular house or fragrance factory in in the 18th and 19th century and it's called La Fabrica the profumi i need to read this la fabrica de profumi casamorati and it started in 1888 and which is why it's called the casamorati 1888 in bologna italy and it was very very well known as one of the top producers of fragrances and bath soaps or bath products my third favorite actually is something that i don't have a full bottle of yet and that is nothing other than serge off richwood and to be honest, the only reason why I don't have a full bottle yet is because I'm waiting to move to London so I can get a 50ml bottle instead of the 100ml bottle that we have back home. Why do I like Serge Off Richwood? I find that Serge Off Richwood is a perfume that um, I takes me to where I want Chanel Coromandel to take me. The richness of it is there. And essentially, the biggest notes here would be patchouli and um, vanilla, and also some sandalwood. To me, Chanel Coromandel was so vintage and something I really wanted to love, but there was just something that was a little bit too much or too old for me. Like it didn't particularly, um, it didn't particularly reflect my style or character. It could be because of the white chocolate. It could be because the rose notes were a little bit heavier or that there was more caramel, if I'm not mistaken, to it. But it was just too um, sharp and a little bit too um, strong for me. Whereas Serge Off Richwood, when it opens, it opens very softly. It has a little bit of a cheaper opening to it. So it's a little bit of a um, bergamot blast but it only lasts for a short while and then all of a sudden the patchouli and the vanilla and the sandalwood they come out and it has a foam, it has a more um deep or dark it has a darker kind of approach to this scent as compared to chanel Coromandel. in fact what i did was i actually sprayed Coromandel on one arm and then ritual on the other arm um one night just to kind of compare and in all fairness the dry down is almost the same once you reach like hour two like you can barely tell but to me the journey of richwood is something that i enjoyed more because i could just smell the patchouli much better without it being damp and dirty but also without it being too sweet and so if you like Coromandel or if you like ish Coromandel but find there's something a little bit too um, in your face about it and not balanced enough then maybe Richwood is something that you would 
love to explore. The sandalwood here is absolutely brilliant as well. I find that the sandalwood is very smooth but at the same time very dry and yet very creamy as well. We talked about how Italian style perfumes generally have a lot of citruses in it and I don't particularly like giving it to hype but this one I couldn't help myself like when I first smelled it I was like hmm okay but then days later I was like wait a second I really want to smell it again and it is none other than Serge of Neo. Why do I like Serge of Neo? It's because compared to just it being a citrus fragrance it has a, a story to it. So if you say it's a pure citrus fragrance generally it just smells very tart like there's it's just linear and that's about it aside from the fact that obviously most citrus fragrances they don't particularly last this one lasts a long time but what i really enjoyed about this is that it kind of brings you um the experience of discovering a bergamot plant and why do i say this if you've ever played with plants as you when you were a kid if you've ever played doctor and wanted to create like a, like a concoction or medicine of some sort with your siblings or your friends you know um there's always a process to how you would do it it always starts with you picking the flowers or you picking the fruits and to me that's how it presents itself there's a lot of bergamot in here and there's a lot of narrowly in here so it's almost like you're greeted by the fruits and the flowers of this particular perfume it also has a lot of green notes or green accord which just adds to the kind of leafiness to it and as obviously as a child you know you start getting bored with the fruits you start getting bored with the flowers then you start picking the leaves and that's the kind of experience that i get from this it does have if i'm not mistaken um nutmeg um cardam no i'm sorry i think it has something like pink pepper and jasmine and um this the sourness and acidity of the bergamot is so strong but once you add in the jasmine it almost feels like it almost feels like you're crushing the leaves of bergamot now but it's held back by this slight leafiness to it which comes from the jasmine and the pink pepper that it it just keeps it from just being overly sour it's almost like you're just smelling the crushed leaves and then as it dries down you know it starts smelling very woody and i like it because when you get bored again of the leaves that you just crushed with the flowers and the fruits again i may have just been a weird child but i used to do this anyway i'd start getting the twigs and just take them apart and just mix them and mash them all together and the smell of the twigs have this kind of um woodiness to it and i think the presence of the cedar and um the presence of the vetiver as well as some you know amber base it just creates this overall woodiness to the aromatic presentation of neo and last but not the least my absolute favorite from Sergeoff is cruise del sur 2 and this one comes from this shooting stars collection similar to neo i do love shooting stars because it is inspired by meteorite falling into the sikoti aline mountains in siberia during in 1947 and it represents like the far reaches of the universe particularly with cruise del sur 2 i think it really does a good job representing um the greenness of the planet especially like the tropical belt and um not a lot of fragrances do feature a lot of these tropical notes i find that if they do they do tend to smell like bath and body or maybe because also i'm a little bit more picky coming from the philippines it just doesn't smell as realistic to me however cruz del sur 2 is so magical because this is the one mango fragrance that actually does smell like the philippine mangoes to me i mean i have tried other mango fragrances i and it just doesn't smell like the real sweet tart freshness of a yellow ripe philippine mango and it's so nice because it doesn't doesn't just get like the flesh of the mango in itself it all brings out 
this kind of like leathery smooth mango skin that you can just get if you put the mango up close. It's really beautiful. I think you, I have to give that credit to the presence of um, blackcurrant, which adds onto the pungency of um, this particular ingredient. It's not pungent in the sense that it stinks. It just adds to that slight pungency. But aside from that, there's another reason why I really, really love this. And it's because I can absolutely smell coconuts in here and coconuts aren't actually listed in the list of ingredients in fact in the opening it only has mango pineapple apple blossom and guava in it for the middle notes and hard notes i would say it only has about an, an exotic floral note accord i honestly don't know what that means but i know know that it does have blackcurrant and violet leaf and in the dry down it does have musk it does have some guyacwood of oh no sorry does have some cedar it does also have some dried fruits and i think vanilla and milk if not vanilla i think in the no okay i remember now it's vetiver musk dried nuts no dried fruits milk and i said that already i said musk okay so essentially those are the notes that i get from it and the beauty of the milk accord mixed in with all these different notes is that the coconut just comes out even if it's not listed in it and it's so beautiful because i've been looking for a beautiful coconut scent and honestly everything just smells very soapy and it doesn't smell realistic i guess i'm holding it up to very high standards because again of where i come from and where i live but um, it is very typical for a Filipino household to do to extract coconut milk and use it for cooking. And so the smell of coconut milk here is just so strong. I think any Southeast Asian would definitely recognize the coconut milk accord in here. And they would also recognize the mango in here. So to me, this smells like home. Like it just reminds me of my family so much. If you really want a fragrance that reminds you of the tropics, of that reminds you of Southeast Asia, of the Philippines, or if, of your holiday in Boracay, or in Palawan, or maybe in Bali, Indonesia, or maybe Phuket, Thailand. This is something that I think really gives a very realistic and beautiful presentation and execution of it so i think this is something that i hope a lot of people will try because then it'll give them an idea of what the real fruits do smell like for us so again i really hope that you enjoyed my top five of surge off and i do hope that you enjoyed also the interesting tidbits that i shared with you about italian style perfume and just in general the kind of character that you can expect from it so just let me know what your favorite surge off perfume is maybe i can try them out if i haven't yet and i hope you enjoy this so goodbye